Hi, I'm Kimberly with Fat Quarter Shop, and today Jen Kingwell is going to teach us how to paper piece, and I'm super excited because I don't know how, and some of y'all don't know how, so show us how. Okay, English paper piecing is where you um, wrap or fold your fabric over a pre-cut piece of paper or foundation, um, and then you stitch, whip stitch, the edges together. So it makes things really simple if you've got very fine points that need to, to come together. In my book, The Circle Game, there are several of the blocks that work really well for um, paper piecing. This one, but you would need to cut the papers yourself for that. So you cut mm -hmm. them exactly to the size, then your seam allowance is added to your fabric. What type of paper would we use? Um, look, you can just use copy paper, but it needs to be not n not a terribly fine one. Um, these are, are pre-made ones. I use the Sue Daly um, ones, a little plug for a, a, an Oz, another Australian. Sue does fabulous English paper piecing. She has great patterns as well. But um, So I, I choose to use these, and her paper is quite a heavy weight. But some people will just use you know brown paper or a lightweight cardboard, good for recycling. OK, let's get started. Um, these are pre-cut paper pieces. This is a little chubby Dresden set. Um, so if you want to use these, you just buy them in a little pack. Or if you have a pattern, like my circle game pattern, has several blocks in it that would lend themselves very well to English paper piecing. If I can find the right one. That one there would be great. Um, because you would cut these shapes out of paper and you could just use copy paper or a lightweight cardboard. Um, and you would cut the shape out exactly. Don't add seam allowance. All right, so that's, that's your papers. If you want to capture a particular image for fussy cutting, it's exactly the same. You would just make sure that you know where that image is underneath your paper and just mark some lines around the... And so when you use sew line, what are your preferred colours of lead? Green and pink I find show up on most, um, but if you've got a really dark fabric you might want white. It's good to have all the colours really. You don't need to buy all the pens, you can just buy the refills and tip them out. So draw around your shape, um, I've done that on this one here, and then you will just cut that shape out. Um, I haven't got my glasses on, I will pop them on so I can see. And so tell me about these scissors. Um, these are a Japanese scissor. They're called an arm wrestler by the Canary brand. I love them. I think I love the, the flat blade. It's really easy for, for cutting out your applique shapes and things. Um, they're just the ones I prefer to use. So we, we're going to cut it out. Yep. And then what's our next step? All right, so then your next step is you get your paper. And there are a couple of ways of doing this. You can just fold your edges over and with a tacking stitch and needle, just run a tacking stitch around your edge. And so that through would, your paper. Through the paper. Yep, through the paper. So you would just come up through your paper and your fabric and continue just tacking along. And that tacking stitch will be removed later. Yes, that gets okay. removed later. Or you can um, just grab another little shape out of there or um, or you can use the um, Sewline glue pen, which this a lot of people really prefer this method and it's quick and easy. So once again, you just pop your shape on and rub, run your glue along the edge and fold your fabric up over your glue. Okay. All right, and then when you come to a curved edge, it's exactly the same. You just ease it around. And so you're putting the glue on the paper. I'm putting the glue onto the paper. And that's going to pull off easily later. Yes, it does. It does. And it's blue so you can see where, you've, where you're popping it. And you just ease that around. And then do you use these? Now, I use these. You can either, um, if you're having trouble keeping it together, you can move that around. But I use these to then hold the pieces together when I'm stitching. Oh, because okay. it's, it's um, once you start to stitch, you've got two pieces of cardboard and fabric. It gets a bit stiff to pop your pins through. So I use the, the clover binding clips. And you're leaving the bottom open? I am leaving the bottom open on this one because I'm going to, this creates this little, um, chubby Dresden uh, and I'm going to applique this circle on over the on top. top so you don't it's just an, a wasted step to to turn that under okay so is our next step to join these together it is okay once you have all your pieces prepared and you're going to start stitching them together they're quite thick with two layers of paper or cardboard so I use the binding 
the clover binding clips to hold my pieces in place. Um, today I'm going to use um, a black orofil thread. I use a 50 weight to sew this. Um, I'm just using black so that you can see clearly, but you would use a thread colour that um, matches most of your pieces because your little whip stitches are going to be visible on the front. So you just come up at the very point and I come in behind um, my seam allowance. So I've pulled the knot right through to the very point and now I'm going to start stitching with a tiny little whip stitch. So it's just a little stitch where you catch the back side and then through and catch the front side. And of course my thread has a knot in it just because I didn't want it to. And once again, back now, the stitches are very close together. Um, probably, I don't know how far apart that is to be honest, but very tight little stitches. And that's all there is to it. And you just stitch down to the end of your paper. So how many stitches per inch do you think that you're doing? I probably do 20 or more. Um, they need to be fairly fine and close together so that, that you don't get any, because once you've taken the paper out, you don't want any um, play in your seam. So they're T, T, tiny. Yeah. And then when, you, you, when you're stitching, you want to make sure you don't stitch into the paper? No. If you catch the edge of the paper, you can still pull it out. But the, the idea is you're just catching the edge of that, the, the fabric beside the paper. And then when you get to the end of your intersection, tell me how you end that off or how far you go down. I just, you stitch to the end of the paper. So this one, because I've left this seam allowance um, not turned or tacked, um, you would just stitch down to the very edge of your paper. Okay. And, and then do you just hide the them. knot? Just hide the knot, yes. Just I just tie a knot, needle through the loop, tie a knot, thread it back up, trim. Um, so that just how you would finish any of your hand stitched seams. And then you just continue around until you've got your design um, all stitched around into a circle. Uh, or if you had hexagons, you might be stitching them into rows and then you would stitch the rows together in mm -hmm. a zigzag. Once you've got all your pieces stitched and your paper is surrounded by stitching, then you can remove that piece of paper. So can you show me how right. we remove the paper? I can. Now this one, I've I've tacked these, um, so I would need to remove the tacking just to show you two different ways. So it would literally just be clipping your tacking stitch and then unpulling it. And the tacking stitch is a really big fat stitch. How many inches do you think that is? It's probably like half uh, an inch? Yes, half an inch or so. So you would just pull, pull out your tacking stitch. I usually use my needle um, and just the Mm -hmm. the blunt end of my needle and I'll just pull my tacking stitches around. Once you've taken all them out your paper will just slip out um, and if you've used the glue it's just a matter of pulling the glue back. Now for this one I would, uh, because I'm going to applique this onto a background before I remove the paper I would um, use some flatter which is a a fabric relaxant or a spray starch. I really like Flatter from the Soak Company because it leaves your fabric really nice and soft. But if you give it a little spray and a press, okay. it will just set that seam. That's the seam I'm going to applique down um, <clears throat> before I remove the papers and then that seam allowance will just stay nicely turned. If you've used the glue, as I have on these ones, it's just a matter of peeling your seam allowance back. And, uh, so do you prefer to, to stitch or use the glue? Um, I use both methods. I don't, I, I like them both. The, the only thing to watch if you are using the glue pen is that you don't stretch your fabric to, it can become a bit taut. Um, it can distort, but also it makes it much harder to stitch if you've really pulled it very hard over the edge of your paper. So if you're using the glue pen, just remember, just fold, don't really sort of pull. And it's that easy. It's really simple. So how are you going, when you put this on your quilts, how do you attach it? Okay, so what I would do now is, after I've sprayed it and removed all the papers, I would pin it onto my background square. And what, you're using just straight pins? 
I use a little applique pin okay. that I'm appliquing, just a tiny, a tiny little clover applique pin. Um, and then I would applique this surface down and then I would, um, using once again the perfect circle, <clears throat> make my lovely centre and I would applique that over the centre. And so when you're appliquing, what thread do you use? Once again, the 50 weight, but this time match it, match, match your the thread, thread colour. The yeah, thread colour. Yeah, to your, um, to your fabric, the applique piece, not your background. Well, thank you so much for all of your tips. My pleasure. And I hope all of you at home can use our techniques today to English paper piece a beautiful quilt.